I will be honest. I did not see huge new news in there. You know, I mean, it, to me, it was uh, color, additional color, but not that many new additional facts. But all the color that came out was pretty damning to the internal discussions at Twitter and just could further confirms that they suppressed this story really without much of a care at the top levels for whether doing so was the right thing, was the moral thing, was had any journalistic integrity to it. Uh, and and there was a knee-jerk instinct to simply suppress it, I think, because it was bad for Joe Biden. Um, and I'll just I'll I'll just give the audience the uh, what I see as sort of the biggest reveals, and that was here's one. Matt released this as I said in, in like 36 tweets. Number eight said um, by 2020, requests from connected act- actors within the Biden campaign and Twitter to delete tweets were routine. One executive would write to another. More to review from the Biden team. The reply would come back handled. Uh, now, Matt points out quickly thereafter, both parties had access to these tools, however. The Trump was the Trump White House was doing it and the Biden campaign were doing it. They're all pressuring Twitter and Twitter is exceeding. But it wasn't balanced, he says. It was based on context. And uh, Twitter is overwhelmingly staffed by people of one political orientation, meaning Democrats. So there were more channels and ways to complain open to the left. Okay, that's not a huge reveal. By the way, we were told that most of the things that were connected in that more to review from the Biden team and then the reply coming back handled was about Hunter Biden d picks, <laughs> which were all over his laptop. And I understand the Biden team did not want those appearing all over Twitter or for that matter in the New York Post. Uh, so, okay, get it. We're not yet in smoking gun category. We're not really yet even in gun category. But then he says um, the following, that to suppress this laptop story released by the Post, that decision was made at the highest levels of the company, but without the knowledge of CEO Jack Dorsey, with former head of legal policy uh, and trust Vijaya Gaddy playing a key role. They just freelanced it, is how one former employee characterized the decision. Hacking was the excuse But within a few hours, pretty much everyone realized that wasn't going to hold, but no one had the guts to reverse it. You can see the confusion in the following lengthy exchange, which ends up including Gad, Gaddy, and former trust and safety uh, chief Yoel Roth, comms official Trenton Kennedy writes, I'm struggling to understand the policy basis for marking this as unsafe. They, They realized they didn't have the justification to suppress it. They suppressed it anyway. The answer is unexplained. I think we can accurately deduce it was politics. What did you make of it? This is the bombshell from the Twitter file story. It's nothing to do with Hunter Biden. It's nothing really to do with Twitter. It's actually about us. The news from the Twitter file story is that we are not crazy. <laughs> okay. The news from the Twitter <laughs> file story is that they have been gaslighting us for years at this point. And we, we can finally now see not only did they suppress the story, which everybody knew, but they knew that it was wrong to suppress the story. They knew that they were not only on shaky ground, but they didn't have a single leg to stand on. The, the uh, decision to prohibit Twitter users from privately messaging the story, not just from posting it on their public feeds, but from privately messaging it, was a category uh, previously reserved only for child pornography. And the Hunter Biden mm-hmm. laptop did include pretty dodgy pornography. Who knows if the girls were 18? But that, that was not the file that you couldn't send. It was the New York Post story that you could not send either. So now the new category at Twitter was that you, you, you could not send uh, child pornography or something that would be severely damaging to Joe Biden in the lead up to an election. Now, I think that all polls and statistics are basically nonsense. But there was a poll taken after the election which showed that 12% of Biden voters would not have voted for Biden had they known about the laptop story. So that would have been enough to sway the election if you're the sort who believes statistics and polls. Certainly the Twitter people, the the people who are running this, believed that this would help Joe Biden. And then this gets to the question of Jack Dorsey. What did he know? Apparently nothing. While the cat was away, the mice played. They were all bickering about this. 
the people with the power on the safety and trust team uh, were not listening to the people on the communications and policy team, and they were just doing basically whatever they wanted to do. And then you had the lone Democrat in America, Ro Khanna, Representative Ro Khanna, who writes into yes. Twitter. This was so egregious that you had a Democrat congressman writing in and saying, hey, fellas, um, we're getting a little pushback here on Capitol Hill on account of you're obviously rigging the election here, and you have no justifiable argument for why you're doing that. C- can you explain? And, and then we see in the Twitter files a response from Vijaya Gaddy, who says, well, you understand, it's, it's because of our policies here and, and because we think this could be unsafe and harmful. And, and then you get Connor responds and says, right, but you know the First Amendment, you know these principles right. of free speech that our country is based on? This really doesn't look good. And the reason that it is a political matter is because Twitter is not merely a private company. Twitter represents the public sphere, square. So in the public square, in a, at least notionally self-governing republic, that is where we make our laws. We persuade our fellow citizens. So if half the country is booted out of the public square, or if the conservative point of view at the crucial moments is not permitted to be spoken in the public square, then you've got a, a takeover of the political order. And by the way, Twitter is the smallest of these big tech companies. And forget about the Twitter files for a second. You know, there are some liberal journalists who are responding to this this report and saying, well, there's no evidence that the Biden administration, you know, or the government really uh, played any role here. This was just Twitter libs making their own decisions. But we do know that the government was was putting their fingers on the scales in the in the social media censorship because Mark Zuckerberg admitted on Joe Rogan's podcast mm-hmm. that the FBI warned him to censor the Hunter Biden laptop story, the very same story we're talking about. So we know that that is all happening. Now we just know that we know. Now we've got the receipts provided by Matt Taibbi, and it's very funny that Matt Taibbi, a liberal journalist, though he's, he's more independent than most liberal journalists, but the man is not on the right, uh, the, the reaction to his exposing this widespread corruption at a crucial moment for our political order it, from the, the journalists on the left is to say, how dare you, Matt Taibbi, right. expose the truth and speak truth to power? So this is where I feel like the story is today. And perhaps we'll learn more in what Elon says is coming, more to Matt and also Barry Weiss now. So I look forward to reading both of those submissions on Substack and and learning more and am open-minded to more. Thus far, there isn't a smoking gun. It's more color on a story we already knew, which is Twitter's abhorrent behavior with respect to the Hunter Biden laptop story, which the New York Post had exclusively a couple of weeks before the election and which Twitter not only suppressed, but as you point out, refused to allow people to even share privately on their Twitter DMs. If I wanted to send it to you because we follow each other via DM, Twitter would not have allowed it. I mean, it's insane. As you point out, the standard for that previously was something illegal. And internally, the communications that we've just seen now make very clear they did not know whether this was hacked. They had a suspicion that it was hacked, backed up by nothing, by absolutely nothing. There was one exchange that was interesting in which the— I want to get the titles right. Uh, former global communications VP Brandon Borman seemed to be having some hesitation over their suppression and asked, can we truthfully claim that this is part of the policy? I think he means like the policy to suppress hacked documents. And James Baker, the controversial former FBI general counsel who'd been involved in the Bureau's Russian collusion ridiculous investigation, and from there went to head Twitter's legal ops, uh, he responded by saying, it's reasonable for us to assume that they may have been hacked and that caution is warranted. It's reasonable for us to assume they may have been hacked and caution is warranted. Caution might have included, we are not sure whether uh, of the providence of these documents. There's been an allegation made that there there may have been some hacking. We were not able to verify that, but the New York Post, one of the nation's oldest newspapers, is claiming that it wasn't, right? No, they suppressed. They suppressed because they wanted to suppress because they understood full well that it could cost Joe Biden votes. That's really where we are. But and, your and point even, about the, the media is the real scandal here. Go ahead. By the way, even the hacking defense that you heard from some of these hacks at Twitter, pun unintended, is that... Uh, 
is, is a weak argument when we're talking about journalism. And you see that from Ro Khanna in Congress. You know, this, this lone Democrat who said, guys, we're getting a lot of pushback on the free speech. Uh, Ro Khanna says, even if the materials were hacked, you wouldn't apply this principle to any other journalistic story. You would, you would I think right. the insinuation is, you'd have no problem punishing, or publishing rather, some, some piece that were damaging to Republicans if it were hacked. The New York Times has no problem publishing information, even if the source of that information is somewhat dubious. You're only applying this here conveniently. Trump's tax returns, Sarah Palin's emails. Right. We can go back to the Pentagon Papers. The journalist is not held accountable for publishing hacked materials unless the journalist participated meaningfully in the hack or encouraged the hack in the first place. The New York Times knows that. Twitter understood that. They didn't care. There is so much to love about the changing of the seasons, right? What better way to soak up the best of this one than with a Michael Phelps Swim Spa by Master Spas? A Michael Phelps Swim Spa combines the benefits of a pool with the therapy of a hot tub. It comes in a variety of sizes to complement almost any yard, even if it's a small one. Master Spas worked with Michael Phelps to develop an at-home training and fitness solution that you can use year-round in any season, even the winter. Exercising in the water is a great way to include physical activity into your daily life. Relax after an afternoon of raking leaves or shoveling snow. The spacious swim area gives you room to stretch your tired muscles or relax your aching back. As your fall calendar fills up, or winter as it is about to be, a Michael Phelps swim spa will will be be the perfect place for you to spend some time together as a family. It's just like a little oasis for you and your family to get out to and spend 15 minutes together. The swim spa drives people outdoors from kids to grandkids. They're all going to love splashing and playing in that swim area. Michael Phelps swim spas are 100% made in the USA by Master Spas. That's the world's largest swim spa manufacturer. A Michael Phelps swim spa is energy efficient too. You can use it all year long. Go to masterspas.com, put in the promo code MK, and that will save you $1,000 on a Michael Phelps swim spa or $500 on a Master Spas hot tub. Masterspas.com, promo code MK. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.